you start off and it's like, I'm going to be a trapper. <laughs> <laughs> and you might trap, you know, especially if you're trying to trap a Cody, uh-huh. you know, you might trap for a long time before you ever get it. But as you're doing that, you're learning, you know. Right. And a coyote is, you know, we all seen the wily coyote, you know, <laughs> likes to play tricks. Well, uh-huh. they'll come out there and they'll flip your traps. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and use the bathroom on it and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so it's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's really fun. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and listening. we got a fun show for you today. we got Mr. Jeremy Odom with us, Lieutenant Jeremy Odom for Region 2. We're going to talk about trapping today, so yeah. I'm excited to do that today. It's, yeah, uh, looking forward to it. Trapping is very popular right now. I hear a lot about it. It uh, seems like it's coming back and there's more and more of it, so I'm excited to learn more today. Yeah. Don, do you want to jump in here and highlight a radio station? Yeah, you always sh- our, to do that. our radio station shout out today is going to WTBG. That's in Brownsville and uh 95.3 and we really appreciate them they're they're uh uh you might be hearing this as a wildcast extra during the week at 12 30 p.m and also yeah that's monday through friday and then also on the weekend so yeah the full show so we appreciate wtbg i like Browns that yeah. wtbg it's got a nice yeah. ring to it it's kind of fun yeah, yeah. Jeremy, you want to give it a shot? WTBG? <laughs> I better not. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as always, uh, I like to tout our, our e-store, shop.gooutdoorstennessee.com yeah. for hats, uh-huh. uh, for mugs, for uh, all kinds of fun fun swag there. Uh, if you need a license and we want you to go buy a license, get outside and enjoy the outdoors. That's gooutdoorstennessee.com. TMWildlife.org is our website for everything else. So that's uh, that's our service, public service announcement. Yeah, those licenses are 365 days good for for uh, a full year now. Yep. So that's awesome. Yep. How many years, Jeremy, did you hear complaints from from folks wanting that to be a year long deal? Uh, several, several. Yeah. Now we're hearing complaints <laughs> the other side now. So. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I just got used to that other. You way. know, change. Yeah, right, right. You know, there was someone asked me why. Why do you do that? And I think it's great for introducing people to the outdoors. I mean, if you want to take somebody hunting, mm-hmm. and they buy a license in these, you know, November or, or sometime in there when it's kind of the right or, time to introduce somebody with a gun. February small game. You yeah, know, February only be small good game. for twenty eight exactly. days. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, it'll expire at the end of February. So now, if they buy it then, they can hunt the next year up to that date. You know, that's so right. It's handy. It is. I think. Yes. Well, Jeremy, uh, Lieutenant Jeremy Odom uh, is here with us today. We're going to talk trapping, but first, I wanted to jump in and, and learn a little bit, a little bit about you. It's first time on the show. It is. Yeah, yep, that's first what I was time. Yeah, first time on Wildcast. So yeah, maybe won't be my last. No, no, we'll have you back. I'm sure. <laughs> we'll see how it goes today, though. Yeah, yeah uh, no commitment. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to lock anything in. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let us let the folks know, uh, listening and watching today, just a little bit about you. Okay, so I grew up in Houston County, not far from here. And uh, went to school at UT Martin and um, started with the agency in 98 in the fisheries division in West Tennessee. So worked with the hatchery group, uh-huh. um, Davy Crockett down there in Humboldt. Mm. And then um, in 99, I started as officer in Montgomery County and I worked there until uh, 2019 and was promoted to the Region 2 uh, Wildlife Enforcement Coordinator there in the Nashville area. All so, right. So, yeah, I've been a career. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, we, we, uh, the previous show, we've talked about the the academy, which is where we are today. We're still here at the academy. Uh, you know, the process of becoming an officer. And, right. and uh, UT Martin was mentioned. That's one of the big schools folks mm-hmm. that oh, yeah. officers go to, along with UTK and, that's right. and Tennessee Tech. But, uh, but yeah, that's cool. So, uh, you've been doing it a while. I have. I have about the – the rope is getting shorter, so not as many years <laughs> left on it. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's good. It's always good look toward towards retirement but too. Yeah. Things have changed, you know, since we started. You know, when I started, and, uh-huh. and um, as an officer in '99 to now, so the the amount of training and and the things where you know officers get involved in, it's just so much different. But, uh-huh. You know, I think for the good. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, the academy is really nice. So, mm-hmm. so Jeremy, while we're on that subject, tell me when when it was in your life that you decided. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to be a game warden. I want to. I want to be a wildlife officer. You know, 
it was early in my career. We, me and my cousins used to always play around. And, um, and one of them was uh, owned a store, and uh, Becky and, and Tony said he was going to drive a truck, a big uh-huh, truck. Uh-huh. And I said, well, I'm going to be a cop. I'm going to pull you over. <laughs> so I always had that, you know, that the law, law enforcement, enforcement part. Thing, yeah. And um, I really thought I was going to go into some type of computers or, or um, teaching. I like education. Uh-huh. And, uh, but uh, I guess it was early in high school, uh, my father mentioned it. He said, you know, you ought to be a game warden. And it never had crossed my mind. Only been checked one time uh-huh. uh, by Officer uh, Jim Story. Checked us rabbit hunting one time, and um, I don't know. Just that little seed got planted, and um, got to hanging around the officers and talking to them, and and I knew really quick that's exactly what I'm because it kind of took care of all the little niches that I was into. Yeah, and, uh, that's and then neat. Love the outdoors. That's neat. Awesome. So there's no. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure by your story, you've been in the outdoors pretty much your whole life, hunting, yep. fishing out. You know. Yeah, we was real outdoor families. So, you know, started in the spring with, with uh, well, actually before that with squirrel and stuff, try to end up the season with uh-huh, it. And, yeah. then, uh, and then on the crappie beds and just throughout the summer and then the fall, of course, you know, getting into the deer. So I didn't get into turkey hunting until later in, in high school and college. But um, as we started getting more turkeys. Uh-huh. But, uh, but, yeah, everything was out there we were involved in. So, yeah. And you realized early on, I guess, when you were going to school, how you needed to prepare for that, right? I mean, your, I did. your education yep. and everything. Yep, so. it's, uh, you know, Martin was a real hands-on school. All three of our universities here that most officers come from are really good universities. Right. But Martin is more, you know, it was closer to being from home, from like Houston uh-huh. County, that small hometown community. So um, it's real, real involved in the classes. So we got to go out. So it's almost like, you know, I was going out with my family. We were still hunting and stuff, <laughs> but this time we had a backpack shocker on our back or, mm-hmm. or something to that effect. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, I learned a lot in college, but um, just kept growing. That's cool. I didn't know the fisheries side of things too. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. A lot of our officers come in at different, uh, different stages, whether mm-hmm. it's a wildlife tech or a fisheries tech that's or right. whatever it may be. So, well, today we want to cover trapping. Uh, like I said earlier, I think it's, it seems to be growing. You hear a lot more about it these days and, and it's a good thing. Uh, Folks love to do it. It's cool, cool way to get outside and and, and enjoy the outdoors. So, um, I guess first off, I don't know. Let's start with uh, a ways to get started in trapping and 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 how to get started. Uh, maybe just jump off there and, and yeah. So you know, trapping. I kind of mentioned to y'all before the show is trapping's not like going deer hunting. You know, if if I would say, hey, I've never been deer hunting, Jason, won't you take me out? He was like, well. I've got a big one on my property. I don't really want Jeremy to shoot it. <laughs> you know, do you have a place, Jeremy, we can go or something like that? So, but trapping's totally different. You know, there's plenty, there's not a whole lot of folks trapping, you know, now. It's really niched. So, so you can come to my property. I can go to your property. You know, it's really easy to go places to do some trapping. And because the landowners are welcome. Yes, there, they, they want they, that. Yeah. You know, there's nothing out there really controlling these, these numbers of these fur bearers. Uh huh. Um, so, so it's easy to find a place to go, and trappers love to teach other trappers. You Education. Know? Yes. So uh, so the opportunity uh, to learn how to do it is really easy. You just got to start asking around, hey, do you trap? And then the ones that, uh, that doesn't have the availability to find someone to teach them, YouTube. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, you've heard people say, I'll go to YouTube and learn how to hook up a hot water heater or whatever. Yeah, right. But trapping, it's re- I mean, I learn stuff. And that's the thing about trappers. You're always learning. You know, there's always a, a, a niche. There's always, you know, a, a, a little trick you can do to kind of help out. So uh, so I've learned some things. You know, bucket sets, trying to catch some otters in ponds that people done. You know, I learned doing that from YouTube. Uh-huh. So, uh, so yeah, you, you can do that. And then it's really inexpensive to get started. You know, a, a trapping can be... Uh, starting off with just getting a have a heart cage, you know, you can go down to TSC or Rural King or get it online. Co-op or yeah, something. Yeah, co-op, any place like that. And you just buy that first trap and that that's trapping, you uh-huh. know, setting that cage. And then you just start learning, okay, how am I going to trap this coon and not the house cat or this possum or, or the skunk? That's mm, yeah. a lot of people, that's what the first thing they'll do. They'll buy a have a heart or, or some kind of cage trap. They set it out and they've got a skunk. And they're like, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's touch on that. Step what would one, you do? Check. What do you encourage folks yeah. to do? And what's the legal thing to so do? So it can't be transported. So it's got to be either let go or dispatched right there. Uh, you know, most of the time what we advise is to get some kind of old blanket, old sheet or something like that. And then 
put that over it. And that's going to, even if it does spray, um, it's going to be contained in there. And if you go up there slowly and drop it, most time they're not going to spray. And um, you just ease it up and cover it up. And then you'll grab that cage from the top and you can move it out away from your home air conditioner unit, <laughs> right. anything like that. <laughs> they tend to love that little yes. area, don't they? Yeah. Yes, they do. So once you move it out in a safe area, then you can uncover the front of that cage. You can shoot that animal uh, with a rifle or something from a little bit of a distance, 22. And I normally wait several hours or even the next day, and then you can dump that animal out. Mm-hmm. And that protects you from getting sprayed. Mm. That's good information. Good information. So uh, you've touched on a lot so far, but we're just going to keep digging yeah. here. Um, you talked about how you learned um, watching YouTube videos, but you also mentioned before the show that, that you went trapping with your grandfather or something too? Yeah, I mean, we have a trapping trailer uh, that we teach out of. Okay. And uh, in that trailer is some of my father's and my great-grandfather's traps oh, that we still use. I mean, they're similar to the ones hanging here on the wall. So probably not a trap you want to go out and use right now because just they're so old, the springs are not as good. But it's good traps to use to learn with. Uh-huh. And as a little boy, I remember going with my dad, and fur prices were a lot better back then. But going out and him catching minks and me following behind him in the little creeks <laughs> and springs <laughs> house and, and running these little traps trying to catch, you know, some minks and stuff and catching coons. And then as I got older, you know, I got into more of the, the beaver trapping and things of that sort. Uh-huh. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, I always say that when you're running a trap line, it's like a little kid waking up on Christmas morning. You know you're getting something. You just don't know what you're getting. So. You may be getting nothing. <laughs> you could be. You could be. <laughs> coal in the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> coal ride. Christmas morning cold. Uh, uh, so uh, what's the easiest, uh, for somebody that's new, what's the easiest? Oh, you mentioned the, the, the cage trap. That's pretty easy. But what if they want to go a little bit more advanced yep. uh, that's not so much set it and forget it? You know, what's, what's one of the traps? That you so suggest? a lot of people, um, you know, I, you got to kind of think about, okay, who, are, who is listening to this right now? Is it a farmer? Is it an avid hunter? Is it someone that's in an inner city or, you know, out in the country, whatnot, but kind of a more, you know, residential area uh-huh. and they're having some coon problems? But whatever falls in that, probably the next thing above that cage, it's a first time trapping, is what's called like our dog proof traps. Uh, they're tube style or sometimes a block style. Uh, they'll have some type of a spring um, that you'll squeeze in, um, set the trigger on it, and then a coon will reach in there, and as he's getting the bait that you placed, uh, the trap will go off, and it's it's like a it's a lot of times they're called like a, a raccoon cuff. Uh-huh. So it just it holds him like a you know a, a handcuff, mm-hmm. and they're there waiting on you. Mm-hmm. And um, from that, you know, you can um, then dispatch that animal and, and get rid of it. Only thing's going to get in there is a coon. Um, you know, depending on what type of bait you use, sometimes people, if they have a lot of mice and things in some areas around, you know, uh, garden or mm-hmm. cornfield, mice population might be um, a little high, so mice will get in there sometimes and mess with it. But uh, I've heard people say, uh, you know, a, um, a possum will mess mm-hmm. with it, depending on the type. Yeah. But a lot of times I'll use sour corn. So I'll give that little treat away. Uh, uh-uh. <laughs> but uh, you'll take corn, put it in some kind of a bucket with a lid, and just put water on it and sour that corn. And depending on if you can keep it indoors for a while to get it that process to start working. But once you sour that corn, you put it in there, pretty much the only thing that's going to bother it then is the raccoon. Okay. So it's real easy. Put, Interesting. You put four, you know, four or five kernels inside of it and a few outside. Um, you secure that, that dog proof to a tree. And then when that animal comes by that raccoon, he'll get a little taste. Oh, that's pretty good. And when he goes in that trap, you'll have him. Yeah. So oh. you can catch a lot of coons really quick with huh. with, uh, with these dog proofs. So that would be my next, you know, one to go up. The next it's one, yeah. real, you know, elementary, real easy to set. And, um, and you know, they're not expensive. Um, you can get several, you know, for the price you'd buy, you know, a, a cage. Okay. For. Well, I think about the, the snare, I mean, it's – I think that would be one of the most simplest traps. It's a cable, you it, know, but is it harder to it catch is. stuff with a snare? It is. So you got to think about um, the snares. So, yeah, it's just a cable. You, you don't have to get – you're not worried about getting, getting caught loop. in it. Yeah, you're getting looped. You know, they'll have a stop on them. Um, most time, wherever you buy them, they're meeting our dimensions, you know, um, on what's legal. But it's a lot goes into a snare, um, okay? Where are we on a run? 
are we on some type of a fence, you know, uh-huh. that, that the coyote's going under or something like that? So how far do I put it off the ground? Uh-huh. You know, how do I get that snare to hang just right where when it goes into it? So, you know, you've got to – any of our traps, if you stop and really think about, you know, what a trapper does, a successful trapper, um, besides like a cage, you know, you've got – hundreds of thousands of acres out here you know in tennessee and you're trying to get this animal in this area to step on this little small spot yeah. or go through this little small spot or right. come to my one you know bait on this yeah. hundred acre right so you know it's it's amazing how you know a good trapper can do that yeah but uh, but yeah snares are tough i mean um it's fun to try, uh-huh. uh, but a lot of times they're getting bumped or getting things like that. If you ever find that one good spot that's that's defined, it kind of limits that animal where he's always got to go through this. You know, you can be pretty successful, uh-huh. but uh, but you can get frustrated quite easily. <laughs> well, with and the they're snare. <laughs> and they're limited to. Well, you got to get them funneled right to it, but yeah. like the you're trying to capture their leg, right? Or is it going to wrap around their body of the animal or what? Yeah, so it depends on how you do it. Uh, but most time they're going to be walking through it. So it's just a loose, you know, open hoop. And as they walk through it, they get their first step, you know, into it, maybe, you know, part of their leg, and then it's grabbing their body and it's starting to, you know, tight up on them. So no, yeah. most time it's getting, you know, one, one or two of their legs and gotcha. their chest area, and that's what's held them. Okay. And then it's got a stop on it where it can't draw down too tight. Mm-hmm. And um, so then you can come and either, hey, I don't want this animal or, you know, it's something I'm not looking for, and you can, you know, put um, a catch pole on it, hold it down, release the snare, or cut the snare, and then release that animal. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, I, th- I think we're probably talking about trapping – Right now, uh, because it's that time of year. But what what yes. when it when do you trap? What, what time of so, year is that normally? So ideally, for me and most trappers, uh, you kind of start right after deer season, um, towards you know middle December to late December. Um, the weather gets kind of better for trapping. Uh, we haven't got into the really really cold temperature yet. You know when you're using a leg hold, uh, whether it's um, you know, cushion hold or offset jaw or laminate jaws, whatever. As the ground freezes and thaws, and depending on what type of dirt you're using, if you're using wax dirt or dry dirt or what, the weather affects all that. So every time it rains, if it freezes. Yeah. So if you just kind of get into that, you know, late December, early January, you can be really, really successful oh. in that. Uh, once you get into late uh, February, you know, the weather, um, unless you really know what you're doing and you're experiencing that it's it's hard for a, a new trapper to be successful in that with the weather mm. it's like you know we were doing a trapping class um, this week mm-hmm. for our first two cadet classes uh, wasn't able to go through because of covid and uh, this year class um, 003 got to do it during an academy phase and we wanted to offer that opportunity for the other ones yeah so we had an optional class for them to come in for three days and as you know, I don't know how many inches of rain we end up having. Oh, yeah, it's been <laughs> rain, yeah. It come a flood. But we knew that was happening, so we used wax dirt. And um, you can buy that from a trapping organization. Oh, okay. And it protects your trap. And it's not going to freeze. It sheds hmm. the water off of it. So all of our traps that we were trying to use for coyotes and things like that on top of the ground uh, were still ready to go hmm. and uh, wasn't affected. So little things like that, you know, you, you have to be aware of. Little tricks and things that you'll yeah. learn as you yes. get more advanced and yes. you learn your equipment. And That's right. I had no idea there was wax dirt. I've always yeah. seen you sift pot, potting soil or something over mm-hmm. a trap, you know, and, mm-hmm. and get it real fine and cover them and yep. blend it in and and all that stuff. But I didn't know there was wax dirt. Yeah, and some people make it. But, um, you know, I'm just uh, – I'm trapping – on my properties and things, just to control the predators to help um, help the quails, help the turkeys, mm-hmm. you know, with their numbers. Yeah. So we're trying to catch, you know, any anything that's eating an egg is what we try to keep that population in check. So protect your chickens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've lost them. <laughs> they went quick enough on my trap. Yeah. But um, so you know, that's the only reason I'm doing it. So I'm using that dry dirt. I get old dirt out of a barn, things like that. I haven't seen any moisture in years. Uh huh. Um, Good tip. But but we use some um, you know some wax dirt when we're teaching, and I've used it some you know when it gets really cold, and I don't want to shut down my trapping. But um, but guys are it's up north that's trapping a lot, you know they can't it's not feasible to buy all that wax dirt, so they make their own. Mm. And um, so you know they you can go on YouTube, there you, <laughs> go. Back you can YouTube. get your own yeah. your yep. own recipe to do that. 
But uh, so you can – trapping can be really expensive or really cheap. Depends on, you know, which route you go. Now, you ran traps this morning, right? We did. Yeah, we – our trap line this morning was, um, I don't know, about 30, 30 to 40 traps is what we ran. Uh-huh. Uh, right now, I've got a, a personal line out of over 200 traps. So wow. It, so it takes me, a, you know, a couple Man. of hours to run all them traps. And you have to remember where all those are. <laughs> you do. Because that's do. legally, you have to know where they are. That's right. And you have to check them within so many hours, correct? Yep. So if you're, speaking of that, so if you're using an instant kill trap or a, that could be uh, like a conner bear or uh, a water drowner set or something like that, uh, you have every 72 hours. Okay. Um, if you're using any of the other types, so anyway, from a cage, a coon cuff to a uh, to a land set, you know, for a leg hold or a snare, any of that, it's every 36 hours. Mm -hmm. Now, a trapper, you know, he's doing it for a reason. Mm -hmm. He's either trying to control his population, so you're trying to take advantage of as much as you can, or you're for the fur right. price. So you don't want to wait 36 hours or 72 hours. You're you're visiting these traps every day. Yeah. Um, sometime in that 24-hour that period, you know. So, like, I might run my traps – you know, early this morning, and I might not get it run again until tomorrow night late. So I'm still doing it in, you know, my 24-hour uh -huh. period, but just life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while. It ain't like going and looking at a couple of them. Right. Well, and thinking about those kill traps, if you're leaving that animal there, is that going to affect your future trapping abilities in that area? If you've got a dead animal that's been there too long? And not so much in a water set. Okay. You know, a beaver is not really concerned about that. You know, they'll do caster mounds and things of that sort. But I'm doing a lot of turnover in traps, so I'm not dealing so much with caster mounds. I'm doing runs. I'm setting dens, you know, where they're doing fresh cuttings coming up the banks, things like that mm. is what I'm doing. So you don't have to worry about that. What you do worry about is as the temperatures start rising, if it stays in the water too much, the hide will start slipping. Mm. So if you do, you know, successful and get something you want to sell, uh, then, you know, you don't want that animal to be in, in that water that long. Well, you've touched on – you've touched on – why trap? Why do you trap? And mm -hmm. and you mentioned market for furs. What's that like right now? Is that is that pretty popular? So, yes and no. Um, you know when when I was a little boy, <laughs> you know you would sell a a red fox or or a gray fox. You know, upwards of a close to a hundred dollars. Hmm. Um, several years ago, um, we'll say twenty years ago, um, about the time we were. You know, people would catch, go catch a beaver, and you get incidental otters. And we still have to um, tag our otters when we catch them with the sighties tags. But you would catch incidentals, and then they fixed it where now you can actually trap for otters. But the price of them got up to like 120 a piece. Wow. Mm -hmm. But in recent years, the markets have kind of just fell to nothing. China's not really importing anything anymore. Um, I think right now a beaver's around $10, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um Coyote, here in Tennessee, most of our coyotes have a rub line, so where they're always going with these bob bar fences. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're missing that guard hairs around the back. So it really hurts our price for that. Bobcats, you know, it's not too bad. Um, otters might maybe can get up to around $20. Hmm. But, you know, the, the hmm. fur market, if you're trying to make money off of trapping, you're not probably going to be very successful. Not like it used to be. No. But it's fun, and it's and you know you it get is. a little bit of money, money back if you want to sell a few. Yeah, yeah, and they have a few sur uh, fur prices or fur sales around the state, mm -hmm. and then um, you know you can try to uh, prep some of your hides, and there's locations you can ship them to, and they'll you know they'll grade them, and it gets a little bit over my head on that, but they'll grade them hides out in what what grade they are, uh -huh. and then they pay per grade, but uh, but you know. It's, you know, you just said it. It, it really is fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's – you have people that deer hunt, and they're trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to find this deer, you know, moving from bedding to feeding and right. things. And then turkey hunters, you know, really go into it. It's, you know, you're trying to outwit them, mm. and you're trying to – Bring them to you. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to get something that doesn't happen natural, <laughs> you know, is have the gobbler come to you. Uh -huh. So – and, and trapping's on that thing, you know. You're like I said before. You're trying to get, you know, if your leg hold, you're trying to get a coyote to sit <laughs> in something that size, uh -huh. you know. In this entire cornfield, I've got, you know, two traps. So two. <laughs> you got like a hockey puck size. Yeah, that exactly. You that you're needing them to step in. So and scent so important, and you know, you're using your bait and your lures. You know, you, you got to know so much about the animal. Itself, you do, and, sure. and you learn. You know, yeah. you start off and it's like I'm going to be a trapper, <laughs> <laughs> and you might trap you know especially if you're trying to trap a coyote uh -huh. you 
know, you might try it for a long time before you ever get it. But as you're doing that, you're learning, you know. Right. And a coyote is, you know, we all seen the wily coyote, <laughs> you know, likes to play tricks. Well, uh-huh. they'll come out there and they'll flip your traps. Oh, yeah. And uh, and use the bathroom on it and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so it's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's it's really fun. I mean, I enjoy trapping. And my girls, you know, as, they, as they've grown up, you know, and they still, my two youngest ones, they still go with me and, and they want to go run traps. But, uh it's a lot of fun to be have. It's good family time. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, before we run out of time, I wanted to talk real quick about licenses and, and being legal. I know you've touched on some of that, but do you need a license to trap? Yes. You need okay. a trapping license. So you'll need your type of 001, just okay. regular hunting and fishing, and then your trapping license. And I, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. Yeah. But, um, but trapping season uh, opens up usually around the third weekend of November. It goes to the end of February. Okay. Uh, but you, excluding that, you can trap um, beavers, um, coyotes, groundhogs year round ar- and armadillos. Okay. So a lot of people have asked, you know, I thought about this the other day when we talked about doing this, is everybody's getting armadillo problems nowadays. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can get you a trap for that. And, uh, and once you catch that first armadillo in that trap, I mean, you're, it's easy after that. So, you know, you could populate the state with uh, armadillos right now. So <laughs> we need some more trappers for them. Is there a, is there a, a, a market for those? No. No. They, Man. We, maybe we can get Don to cook us one for Thanksgiving, maybe. I've heard not to eat them, but don't touch them. I don't know. Yeah, those little triangular aeration holes in my yard. Yes. Yeah, it took yep. me a while to figure out what that was yep. initially. And then I finally figured it out. Yeah, so you can, you know, they, they sell boxes. Um, online that mm-hmm. you can order uh, from them, and they'll come seasoned or unseasoned. But uh, but once you get the first box, you can even build your own uh-huh. and just build you some type of a curtain with something. And as that armadillo comes through your yard, he comes inside that curtain and goes in that box, and you'll leave him in there for a few hours, and that scents that box. And then once you do that, you don't have to do anything. Just set it out there in the yard. You don't have wow. to bait it. You just have it out there, huh. and they, they go with it. So Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe times. that's something we need to get into. Maybe that's the easiest trap. There you go. <laughs> Armadillo <laughs> trap. Yeah. <laughs> you come to my house, and we can play around there. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do a show on uh, uh, Armadillo traffic. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is a video out there. We do have a video on our – I know it's on Facebook. It may be on our YouTube channel as well. But, yeah, so we've got some stuff out there on that, and that's good information today. Yeah. Um, and they can any all any people in the public can call our officers. That's mm-hmm. why we do this, and they can give technical advice. We really don't have the means to come out and help them trap, but we can give them information and sure. kind of point them in the direction to help them. Right. Sure. Need. So that's why y'all were out today. I mean, yeah, you got right. these officers out there learning yeah. uh, learning the ropes if they haven't don't know it already. Yes, so they're that's learning. right. Yeah, so. And that's the take home today uh, for me, especially, is that trappers are always willing to share. They are and, and share the share the knowledge. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we didn't get into conditioning traps. I'm sure there's some tips there, but we'll get there later. Yeah. Uh, we'll have you back sometime. I think it was a good show. We'll have him back, Don? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, right. I'm yes. for it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Jeremy's All in. Right. <laughs> Invitation has uh, been sent. We'll see if it gets accepted. Um, <laughs> Jeremy, thank you. Appreciate your uh, Glad y'all had knowledge me. today. Don, thank you. You bet. Uh, this is Tennessee Wildcast. We appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.